Welcome back. The Maryland State Highway Administration has a long to-do list in Washington County this year, especially when it comes to I-81, which is currently home to five active work zones along its 11-mile corridor. Ken, are you prepared for traffic this year? <laughs> well, you know, I, I drive 81 every day. Um, I am absolutely excited that we are finally widening it to three lanes. Uh, you know, so, so I, I drive 81 down into West Virginia. So once I get past the first West Virginia exit, it expands to three lanes <laughs> and traffic just really opens up a lot. You know, we, we've really got a, a real congestion issue going through Maryland. But then of course, after it gets expanded to three lanes in Maryland, then Pennsylvania has to do their part as well. I, I'm optimistic, you know, I'm seeing the, the bridge progress well, I'm seeing the, the work between the two lanes progress well, and I, I'm really looking forward to, to having better travel. Ron, what do you think? I'm watching carefully with what they do. Number one, you have nine bridge re, uh, repairs. Those nine bridges make up a lot of territory, and one's over railroad track there close mm -hmm. to the, where the SPCA is on Interstate 81. Uh, and what you're going to find are redoing those bridges because a lot of them are in bad shape. And it started at Mulgans Avenue, so you'll have eastbound, northbound at exit, uh, exit 9, and then you have exit, uh, uh, or not east, yeah, be northbound traffic, north and south, northbound right. and southbound traffic there, and each one on down till you get to um, Halfway Boulevard, and they will all be redone. Um, that's a big deal because I watch, I drive that road three, four times a day usually, and how they have been rusting and how, mm -hmm. how the, the, you know, the problem is and to watch what they've been trying to do to shore them up. You also have Washington County projects over the Antietam Creek. I did see that the county commissioners put into the budget that bridge over the Antietam Creek uh, uh, and their budget. There's a lot of, of county uh, road well, projects we have Sharp's as well. Pike that is undergoing a lot of renovations right now. I was just gonna right say now. that about Walmart that's coming to Sharpsburg. They're, they're having to rebuild the infrastructure right. for Walmart. And, and I mean, what do you guys think? What is that gonna cause, you know? Well, hopefully it'll be an improvement. I mean, I, I would certainly hope that, I, I, I certainly hope they wouldn't, you know, screw up the, the traffic engineering and make it worse instead of better. Well, this, this is actually a Walmart expansion. They're paying for this improvement. Right. Oh, that's now, right. Wait a minute. Well, Who is? Walmart is actually picking up the tab on Sharpsburg Pike. How much do you think they're paying? I don't know if it's well, all Well, they're not it. paying 100% of, of it, it, but. <laughs> they're picking up a major penny of it, right? right? What happened on, on Robin Wood Drive when the hospital was there? Now you want to understand why residents out there were all bent out of shape right. and the hospital didn't pick up the cost? When well, they were asked to pick up the cost? Let's see. Right. But it's okay because we got Yale Drive now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we got <laughs> Wal 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 Walmart is, is, is making pretty good coin versus a hospital which has to keep reinvesting in itself. But they did it. They did right. it to get right. the job done. Yeah. And they got that big pipe going under the, uh, under the Sharpsburg pipe for drainage issues. But, you know, one, one of the challenges that we'll have on 81, and I came across it, you know, two weeks ago. I had to drive down to see my son. And I put, it, put on my cell phone, the GPS, and first thing I get, as soon as I get onto 81, there's construction. Yeah. So I get off 81, I go around the construction zone, I go down. As soon as I get back on 81, there's more construction down Williamsport. Get off, <laughs> I go, go across Route 11, Good I try. hop on 81, you know, after the first exit in West Virginia. <laughs> clear sailing the rest of the way yeah but uh, you know that that's stuff that we all are going to have to sort of adapt our schedules to because of the construction then we have a couple of yahoos that think that the shoulder is another lane of traffic yeah and they deserve the right to cut somebody off so have yeah. you ever had that happen to you uh have you ever done too it? many <laughs> 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 you got me i've done it but i put my blinker on so okay. it's okay <laughs> no you know i, I these are, these are growing pains. I mean, for a while, 81 is going to be a little bit rough to travel, but I think that once we get it expanded to three lanes, it's not only is it going to be better for local commuters, but I think it's going to be more attractive for interstate truckers to take opposed to going down around the Beltway. And our local economy. And it'll help boost our local economy in the process. Well, the truckers, if you're out at 9 p.m. or later on 81, the truckers are still favoring 81. 
Um, and then, you know, that we have a bottleneck that's going to head up into Pennsylvania, so hopefully that they'll do some infrastructure improvements there too. Uh, but, you know, the upgrades to the bridge, Ron, is that, is that something that just kept being pushed back until it got so severe? I think it got pushed back because you have to have coordination between West Virginia and the state yeah. of Maryland. You had to, all the budget numbers and everything had to, to get into play. And there wasn't enough people raising cane about the problem when I still blame the state of Maryland for it. I don't care if it's a Democratic administration, right. which you called it. It was a Democratic administration. I think Martin O'Malley or anybody could have gotten that done. I think it's way long overdue. It should have been something in, in the Department of uh, Transportation's budget to do it. It's an interstate road. It isn't just a Maryland road. Uh, but you Maryland have to road. ask. Huh? You have to ask, and the ask wasn't happening from the state of Maryland to the federal government to do the expansion. You get down to the, the amount of counties that Interstate 95 runs through. Oh, see I, how I, many well, ask you, okay? yeah, well, let's look at the population yeah, base there. Yeah, let's okay. look at the population base and look who runs the things. <laughs> comes from what you call weak legislators back then on right. this side of uh, the Appalachian Trail. Uh, people can figure that out later. Okay, but you know, the, the, the painting on the, the bridges and the maintenance on the bridges yes. that we have, is that something that we just kept pushing back instead of addressing? Because bridges have been a major issue for 30 years in this country of how our in interstate infrastructure has continued to go downhill. So is that something that we just didn't need to address or we just said, well, we're going to get it all at one time? Because we have several projects on top of each other, which is causing some of the angst, I think, that we have on 81. Well, and this isn't just a, a state issue as far as the bridges go. You know, I don't remember the number, but I remember it was a, a significantly large amount of our bridges uh, and infrastructure in the U.S. is considered structurally deficient. De yeah, right, deteriorating. And, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's about to immediately fail, but it means it needs attention pretty soon or you may have issues. It's, um, I think you're going to find in the next couple of years a lot of different things happen. The, bridge, the bridges are being done uniform. You can bid the price out far cheaper now mm -hmm. than what you could, you know, one at a time. And whatever problems you create, it's going to be done in off-peak hours. I just right. went through, how many of you really realized that over the last month, they did all of the entrances and exits on Interstate 81 has totally been torn out, yep. rebuilt, and repaved, and hardly ever held up traffic. Well, they've been done, done that way to handle the infrastructure improvements that we're doing along the highway because they're going to get a lot more use yeah. over the next period of time as we're diverting traffic and bypassing bridges. So, yeah. you know, we're planning ahead, which is something good in Washington County. Um, you know, I-81, once we get to three lanes, we're, we're fantastic. Then we have I-70 to deal with. We have that bottleneck in the cloverleaf that we have at I-70 going into I-81. And, you know, frequent times when I've gone off 81 to 70, you wind up being a, in a new parking lot, you know, certain times. That's a new, uh, <laughs> that's a new project in all of this. That, that northbound lane off of 70 to 81, that's a brand new project. That one lane will get, run the whole way to the Valley Mall. Right. And then the Sharpsburg Pike extension that we're doing. Yes. Because um, I think they're diverting traffic down the exit and then back up the other exit uh, to, you know, move people around, you know, over the bridges and such. That's going to have a major impact on anyone that lives, you know, south of the outlets in our community. Right. But I, I don't think it's an extended period of time. I think it, we're You know what people will weeks, learn in this whole endeavor? If you're going to, if you live in, in uh, Morgansville, where I do, and you want to go downtown Hagerstown, stay off 81. You don't have to yep. go on 81. Take the back road. Take the back road. If the people down where you just talked about went on over to 632 or to a new, another route, there's plenty of ways. We've got great roads in Washington now, County. Use that. Ron, admit, you're an alley driver in the city of Hagerstown, aren't you? Yes. Okay. I, I, I knew that. I knew that. He has an alley named after him, right? You know? Scally Not Rally, yet. huh? <laughs> <laughs> Ken, what, what's your thoughts? No, I mean, yeah, I, I usually take the back roads whenever possible anyway. You know, I, but with that said, you know, I do drive 81 every day because 
that's the most convenient way for me to get to West Virginia. Mm -hmm. That's the most convenient way for me to get to Pennsylvania. And that's really what the expansion project is about. It's not about providing local <laughs> infrastructure for us to get to Williamsport to Hagerstown. You can do that easily on back roads. It's about providing that, that infrastructure for vehicles that are going through our state. Now, sure. where, generally, where do you live? I live South County. You, you, you live around? in South County, so yeah. why couldn't you just go right on over to West Virginia through Sharpsburg and Shepherdstown? Uh, it's quicker for me okay. to go to. But do you, you do 81. have an alternate? I route. do have an alternate route. Okay. It's quicker for me to take 81 though because where I have to go in uh, West Virginia is in the northern part of West Virginia. But I think what you are addressing is transport, transport yeah. and yeah. economy. Yeah. All right. And on that, good points, everyone. This is a great discussion. Next up on the flip side, our panel takes a closer look at the proposed expansion of the Maryland Theater. Stay tuned.